pedestal to Harold the H. Ark, ark, ark. Peacock, who is a historian and comes up with some wonderful stories that he researches, and you can find them on historyoutthere.com. But he's going to tell me about a Hoyland 88 years ago that wouldn't uh, that stopped the Archbishop coming to Ipswich. Good day there, Harold. Uh, yes, good morning, Danny. Your family might have a bit to apologise yeah, for. Yes, um, this is very interesting. Tell us all about it. Yeah, look, it, actually, I, got, I found this story because last week you said there was a Hoyland County in Ireland. Now, that's fake news. There's no such county. But <laughs> what I did find is that your family is very big in the north of England. Right. That's because Hoyland is a town in South Yorkshire. Hoyland developed from the hamlets of Upper Hoyland, Hoyland, and Hoyland Common. Well. The town has also been known as Nether Hoyland. So you're from the Nether, Hoyland Nethers. And that name was to prevent confusion with High Hoyland, which was another town up the road. And a bloke called said, I Hitler. Well, I don't know, but what I've got to tell you about is a bloke called John Hoyland yeah. and his remarkable impact on the history right here in Ipswich. Ah. Now, John Hoyland was born in Hoshangabad in India in 1915. Right. John's father was the famous historian Jack Hoyland. Yeah. He was the nephew of the famous mountaineer Howard Somerville who made two unsuccessful attempts on Mount Everest in the 1920s mm. and was awarded the 1924 Olympic gold medal for mountaineering. Wow. In 1934, our John Hoyland was a 19-year-old medical student at Oxford and had the growing reputation as being one of the six best mountain climbers in England. Now, you've got to realise that this was during the golden age of Himalayan exploration, and it wasn't for another 20 years that Hillary and Tenzing would finally be the first to climb Mount Everest. So John Hoyland was really big time. And so it was in 1934, 88 years ago last month, that John Hoyland caused complete chaos here in Ipswich. Wow. And the result can still be seen around the world to this very day. Wow. It was on the 5th of September 1934 that the Most Reverend William Wand became the third Archbishop of Brisbane in a lavish ceremony at St John's Cathedral in Brisbane. Now, just 15 days later, on the 20th of September... He was getting ready to be welcomed to Ipswich in a civic reception. It was to be hosted by the Ipswich Mayor himself, Alfred Tully Stevenson. Mm. But as the Archbishop was preparing for the visit, his Ipswich plans were thrown into disarray, mm. all because of John Hoyland. Mm. You see, John Hoyland was the budding British star in Alpine exploration, and that morning, news had broken around the world from Mont Blanc, which is the highest amount in the Alps and Western Europe. Mm -hmm. And the news was that John Hoyland had disappeared. Oh. Yep, the famous Himalayan explorer Frank Smythe had set out to search for him. Now, there was none better to lead the search because Smythe would take part in all three British expeditions to Mount Everest in the 1930s. Mm -hmm. And right now, it was believed that John Hoyland, the English up-and-comer, had almost certainly perished. Right. But worse still, and this is why Ipswich was thrown into chaos, was that Hoyland had not only lost his own life, but he'd also led the Archbishop of Brisbane's only son to his death as well. Uh. You see, yeah, the 22-year-old Paul Wand had joined Hoyland on the climb. They both perished. And their bodies, the bodies of the two Oxford students, were only recovered after a month-long search. Mm. They, they had met their deaths because they'd fallen 600 feet into a crevasse on the Italian side of Mont Blanc. Yeah. So the story was worldwide news, and the pain was felt no more than right here in Queensland by Archbishop Wand. And, of course, his landmark visit to Ipswich was cancelled on the morning that it was to happen, and it wasn't undertaken until the following year. Now, the Archbishop's son today is commemorated in the chapel of the St. Francis Theological College at Milton in Brisbane. Above the altar is a painting by the famed Queensland artist William Bustard. In the centre is the nativity and to the left is a shepherd with the face of the Archbishop's son, Paul Wand. Now, Archbishop Wand later became Bishop of London 
Now, in the chapel at Fulham Palace in London, there's a stained glass window that depicts an angel. Mm-hmm. And that angel also has the face of his son, Paul Want. Mm-hmm. So, Denny, your Hoyland family created havoc here in Ipswich almost a century ago, and there are memorials on both sides of the world that commemorate that awful day that the Archbishop's visit to Ipswich had to be cancelled. What a great story. Now, that I want to let my dad hear that story, so it'll be uh, on your Facebook tomorrow. What what it'll be on? Yeah, historyoutthere.com. The whole story goes up Sunday mornings, and there'll be photos and a lot, lot of detail, and uh, that's the true story of the Highland, of the Hoylands, and not the county Hoyland that you uh, tried to uh, tell us about last time. <laughs> well, that is so good to hear you. Uh, and his nephew, Howard Somerville, was the 1924 mountaineering gold medalist in the Olympics. That's right. Yeah, and he was, he was awarded that uh, simply because... I don't think there was actually competition. It's simply because he was the best in the world at the time, but, you know, the Olympics was different back then. Best in the world. Mate, that is such a great story. Um, I really appreciate that. I'm fascinated. Are you fascinated, Damien? I'm fascinated, Dan. Yeah. All right, now... Uh, <laughs> And how do we find it? it Hmm? Yeah, go online to historyoutthere.com and it is fascinating that Ipswich just bombs up in history in the strangest of places, doesn't it? Yeah, and uh, John Hoyland was, you know, he was was there in uh, South Yorkshire in the north of England. That's right, and the Hoyland's central to the whole, whole story. And he was a Quaker missionary, by the way. Was he? Absolutely, he was. Yeah, and Danny, that's very similar to you. You've got a bit of Quaker in you. Material Quaker. cereal from the Quakers, anyway. Whatever flaming that is. <laughs> that was Harold the H. Hark, hark, hark. Peacock with history out there right here on West Brim Radio. It's 822.